I want to start by creating a standard for broadcasting responsibility, accountability, uh, what's uh, ooh, a little bit of a power footer there, what's, uh, what's responsible to say and what you need to do when you uh, mess up. Uh, so here is a story, a sad story, a guy named Leslie Lawrenson. Um, with a detail from this story, he's a guy, um, a story here in uh, news.sky.com. Uh, COVID-19 devastated families, please, after death of lawyer who refused to get COVID vaccine. Uh, Leslie Lawrence's family said he had a misguided belief that because he was relatively healthy, he was safer to let his immune system handle everything. Now, if you look at some of the, uh, you can notice our friend here, Nathan Bernard, up at the Mainer. Uh, he's been on here before talking about the nurses' strike up in Maine. Um, here's that story. Um, that detail I had previously where his family was going through his Facebook page looking for uh, pictures for their funeral and they come across a whole bunch of anti-vaccine stuff, including videos that he made himself where he's like, I'm just going to let my immune system do it. I hope it's COVID. We got immune systems, that sort of stuff, right? What was his media diet, which is frankly my most, when I saw a guy protesting a testing site downtown Brooklyn the other day. And I regret not just asking him, Hey, where are you getting your news from? I'm interested in more in like knowing more like you do. Um, well, where Leslie was getting his news from was people like Brett Weinstein of the dark horse podcast here. Uh, he shares a video on his Facebook page. Um, I believe it says, yeah, people need to watch this. It says red pilled on COVID vaccines. <laughs> Now, this was, let me just say quick, that wasn't a title put up by uh, the Dark Horse podcast itself, but that's just how people are receiving it. And I would say, as somebody who makes content myself, if my content was being received that way and titled that way, I would say something about it. Mm -hmm. No, you're 100% right. I didn't realize they hadn't put that forward. It, it was just, I was just more saying, seeing a picture of those three guys and then using any kind of terminology like red pill or blue pill or black pill or whatever. It's just, yeah, it doesn't really fit for me. One of those guys claims to be the inventor of MRNA in a way that I think is pretty uh, suspect. Um, but you can, that's not what this is about. Another one, Leslie Lawrence, why is this information being blocked? Big tech censorship of ivermectin, big tech censorship of COVID treatments from live stream number 82. Okay. Um, and also a big long thing about uh, ivermectin is, uh, you know, really safe. And there's a conspiracy to uh, not let you want to be uh, cured by it. Um, um, now, we should stop there just to comment on ivermectin as a treatment. It is not recommended by it, like as a use for COVID at this time. By the FDA. Right, yeah. by the FDA. Um, there is is a problem at poison control centers where people are taking the uh, vet version of ivermectin uh, because they've been led to believe that it's some kind of cure. Um, it's not. And all the evidence suggests, as far as my understanding, that any possible benefit is theoretical at this point in, and in doses that are super, super high. Now, that is to say, like, all knowledge and science is uh, is provisional, um, but it is being studied. It is not being suppressed. In fact, like all these Brett Weinstein That's... episodes got massive, massive. <laughs> um, and, and where do people think they're hearing about this? They, ivermectin isn't like this thing everyone knows about. It's because of, frankly, <laughs> um, people acting like sheep a little bit and getting involved in the livestock thing. And, and it no, sucks because like, you know, just to say like, it sucks that people are led into and are, are prone and are made um, made sort of uh, uh, vulnerable to this sort of snake oil because we are in a system where you the way to like win health in America is to make the right consumer choice somehow, right? Because it is a fucking lottery where it's going to bankrupt you actually, and people are skeptical of it, and it's being just mo monetized by you know. Um, a lot of the same way hydroxychloroquine was by unscrupulous people. So Leslie Lawrence, and you can actually just, go ahead. I just wanted to note on this, um, you know, on, on, on the efficacy of, of the drug, right. Put all that, that aside, right. I think 
Um, you know, there's, there are people who are, as you were saying, like there's a lot of studies looking into its possibility. And I think that that's a hundred percent legitimate. And I think that the only thing that's been a sort of annoying about the conversation is that some people are, are refusing to recognize it. Like, Oh, well, there are some people who are looking into this to study it scientifically, right? Because it immediately became like culture war, right. Versus uh, left kind of thing. Right. Beyond that, what is so despicable, and I don't want to take away the weight from what you're going to say about this person in, in a second, but mm -hmm. what is so despicable about a lot of these kind of like snake oil salesmen uh, when it comes to things like ivermectin and all these other drugs is they're speaking to people who have a distrust of this system because this system has failed them time and time again. And I know the dunking that people have been doing on folks for showing up in all these hospitals and poison control centers for taking these uh, drugs, you know, from the feed store. Right. And I get it. It can be a little funny and, and all that. Right. But, you know, people know that and they know how to do that or they're comfortable with it because people do that a lot of times with drugs in this country that they can't afford. Right. And again, this I'm not giving anyone medical advice, but. You know, this is something that I have seen people in my circles do, not taking ivermectin or anything like that, but saying, okay, well, there's an animal version of this drug that I need and I can't afford the, you know, the, the thing, right? And it can oftentimes have disastrous results. What I'm saying is like, it's so sickening for me to see these kind of people who like are trying to profit and make a name for themselves on this kind of thing, doing it on the backs of people who have mistrust of the medical system, oftentimes for very legitimate reasons. And two, are encouraging them to take risks with their own life and their own health because those people have already been um, had either experienced that directly themselves, you know, done something like that with another drug in the past, or it's seen people around them doing it. I don't know. It just like it brings back a lot of kind of sadness uh, and, and, and memories uh, for me. And it really just fills me with contempt for anyone who want to play around with other people's health like that. Yeah. And giving people just the wrong sense of the sort of uh, the risks of here. Right. Yeah. Like, exactly. and look like I, I, some people might say like Leslie Lawrenson, okay, he's like the UK. Um, so that's not American capital mm -hmm. system. Right. But uh, fundamentally this is the same like um, predatory, like people are being preyed on really by People who don't really care what yeah. they're saying. Here's yep. and so think of how like, a general person would think about getting the vaccine if they heard this segment here. Look at this is how they talk about it. This is two episodes before, two or three episodes before the one that Leslie posted. By the way, um, so you're saying, I, I, I understand that there has to be risk, and I'm not saying that that therefore means there is harm. Right. But, I prefer the word risk here to safe. But I'm going to upgrade that okay. because I have been super careful about that. And I have mm -hmm. said, I've used this example deliberately. The fact that you have put a gun to your head and pulled the trigger is not inherently harmful, but it is inherently unsafe. Okay. So that distinction is the important one. Now, I think with greater clarity about the mechanism of action when things go right, we know that there is harm being done to tissues in the course of action of this vaccine. We don't know that it's significant. It could be that for some reason I can't see that the number of cells that are affected. Yeah, and so we don't need to go into farther that. Like, so what he's doing there is not a one-to-one -one connection with Russian roulette in the vaccine. He's really saying that compared to the vaccine, Russian roulette, you get out of it five times out of six with absolutely no harm. But uh, uh, one of those, you obviously get super harm. Um, but... And the vaccine, it's all harm. That's what that's what the gist of that was. And so, like, to hear this family say, yeah, we're going through our media. We see, I would feel super, super um, sick to my stomach if I found out that my stuff was all over guy, guy a dead guy's uh, Facebook page because he followed advice that I was giving. Even if I wasn't the only one, he posted a number of your stuff. And here's Brett's response, just to say, like, just to drive this point home about responsibility here. In essence, you will find many people saying, well, you know, lives are at stake and what you are saying on your podcast is going to result in the death of people. And this is, um, on the one hand, as we ourselves have said before anyone else said it about us, obviously there are lives at stake. And so we take this very seriously. On the other hand, it is cheating to hold us responsible for this. The correct honorable way to do this is to recognize that lives are at stake in the public health policy questions and your personal health decisions with respect to how you choose to protect yourself from COVID. That is true. 
What that means is that a great deal rests on how the evidence is interpreted. And it is true, you can certainly protect yourself from the accusation that you will be responsible for other people's um, health consequences and possibly deaths by not saying anything. That's true. You can simply not say anything or you can embrace the conventional wisdom as dispensed by public health authorities and then who could possibly hold you responsible. On the other hand, you've watched those public health officials fail again and again and again. And I'm going to monetize that rot. Yeah. Uh, fundamentally. So that's how he feels about this. You know, it's not Look, I'm just doing my job. You, you're on your own to like make your individual decisions. But I'm up here against the corrupt public health officials, right? Blah blah. blah. So, I I pointed out uh, a history that I think a lot of people didn't know, which I I found interesting. I guess I'm in my own little world. But uh, shortly after uh, Brett, uh, after um, if, in fact Michael passed away, um, Brett Weinstein actually right before. It, <laughs> It was all happened during the same week. I remember this because I, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I remember that week yeah, too well. This happened here. Um, actually, yeah. So I remember texting with Michael about this. That was actually the last thing we texted about. <laughs> um, attention, Sam Cedar and the Young Turks. I've never worked for the Young Turks. I love that. <laughs> um, so, um, so I don't know. I'm he 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 he's taking offense with something about like. We'll see why it's ironic that he misidentifies me with an organization. But anyway, at Majority FM producer Matt Leck is broadcasting knowing falsehoods about me in a violence-prone environment. The danger is obvious, as are your legal and journalistic obligations. Immediate retraction, apology, and termination of Matt's employment. Brett tried to get me, uh, you know, fired. It's very clear in this clip here. Now, what, what happened? Uh, why was he so pissed? Uh... <laughs> Uh, so what happened is this, I put up this tweet. Um, I, I, and now he'd never really like specified. He never interacted with me. He just went straight to my boss, um, mm -hmm. on Twitter, my boss. And then my, I guess, Karen style. Uh, yeah, he, he'd fully and the chank too. Cause you know, it's chanks to <laughs> yeah, yeah. The real captain. I, um, I can't remember if he tweeted anything about it, but anyway, so here's what I actually tweeted. Um, Hey, Brett Weinstein, want to come on Majority FM to discuss this consulting work you're doing with the Department of Homeland Security in Portland now that they're disappearing protesters in rented minivans? Now, Brett, the issue that Brett took with that, and I should just play this video um, because I think it's important uh, to include this. Um, uh, here is um, from, I'm not sure which Oh, this is from Brett and Heather's 21st live stream. Um, and here, sorry, I'm trying to do this on my laptop. Uh, no worries. Uh, here's this video where that I, I posted, I included when I said this consulting work, I'll, I'll, I'll let Brett in on something. This is a proximal word, which means I'm describing something within the vicinity. I, the fucking video that I included in the tweet, right? <laughs> I'm not talking about any other consulting work out there. I'm including the consulting. This is what I mean by the consulting work. This is why I included the video in the tweet. Uh, and here's what this video said. Of um, this mindset to disrupt leadership. Again, this is in the middle of when they, the DHS started showing up and was just picking people up in rented minivans yeah. out of Portland moment when everything seems to be at stake and uh as i'm sure we will end up talking about i had a contact this week somebody who has been following us for quite some time contacted me he's actually a, a department of homeland security officer in portland and he contacted me i think it's fair to say in something of a panic based on what he is seeing unfold night after night for the last i guess eight nights in Portland, a standoff between the protests and the police. And he frankly is worried about what might emerge from this. And among the possibilities are, you know, a civil war mm -hmm. based, you know, in race. And it wouldn't be the first one of those, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and so I really think we have to uh, figure out 
how to escape the momentum of this moment. Yeah, so escape the momentum of this moment. Now, what I found newsworthy about that clip is that uh, this uh, popular, uh, I would say, crypto reactionary propagandist is talking with any DHS person about race war. Like, that's why I included mm. it up to that point, and I didn't stop before they got into the content of what they said. The consulting work was me being a bit... Um, facetious like i think it's uh I, I don't think like they're flying you out in a c-17 brett like i think some fucking goon be that because that's the only people who staff those agencies at this point yes for the large part is talking to another goon about race war and mm -hmm. the evidence of that is andy no like that's the story to me it's and so like what he did there was and, and let's i want to get to this part now where he he gets really indignant on his show and uh, in fact mentions Michael by name uh, in uh, I think a way that I think would piss me off if I didn't think he, this guy was like such a chicken shit. Um, and here is, yeah, I think this is, here is him uh, really pissed at me. And uh, we'll talk about uh, the way he characterizes what I said again. Because um, here's the thing. I regret deleting the tweet. Um, it was my first day with this phone, um, brand new Galaxy S20. Um, <laughs> I had just logged into Twitter and this was like right away. I'm walking across Brooklyn. It's hot as hell out. Uh, mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I see so many, you know, notifications because Brett has <laughs> tried to get me fired uh, from TYT and Majority Report. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, so here, and, and so I deleted the tweet and then I sent a snarky reply saying, I'm happy to amend to say that Brett was not paid or in any ways, like uh, this consultation was in any ways official. Uh, getting to the point of, let's talk about the whole, like your hysterical race war hypothesis that you're mm -hmm. again, just reproducing from Andy. No, uh, here is his response um, to, uh, and we responded on majority report. Sam said he owes us an apology for <laughs> mispronouncing my name. Um, here is uh, him getting really pissed at me. Final thing. Um, with the death of Michael Brooks, I have held my fire with respect to the... Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, that makes me so mad. And also cracks me up at the same time. Dude. You know, I just, I get his name out of your mouth, but talk about holding your fire too. Just is like, it's so yeah, such a chicken shit phrase, man. Yeah. It's so funny. He also says like, uh, um, uh, unleashed lies. Anyway, here we go. Yeah. Okay. Final thing. Um, with the death of Michael Brooks, I have held my fire with respect to the, um, interaction with the producer of the majority report, Matt Letch. But there's something that needs to be said here. So many will remember that Matt Letch unleashed a falsehood about me and therefore... You said falsehoods in the tweet, and I was looking for what else he might take issue with. And honestly, I kicked the tires of all of it, and that little pedantry about consulting work is all you could take issue oh, with. But, Go ahead. But come on, man. I mean, like his whole thing in that original video that you're playing is trying to give himself an air of inside knowledge it about absolutely things. Right. so i mean come on bro this is not something that's being pulled out of thin air you're over here trying to imply i had a that you're having these secret conversations with dhs folk i had a right? contact mm. yeah yeah about us that i was somehow consulting for the department of homeland security again not somehow i included the video where you to talked about <laughs> you it, that said you, it yeah it, that he references here it's like <laughs> the same thing he references yeah talked about it on the show motherfucker i clipped that part <laughs> like what are you talking about what he was referring to was discussion with a an officer for the i mean like consultations like i'm sorry that that's like this consulting work work is also could be voluntary like uh, uh, anyway i'll stop being a uh, a pedant here because i think that's what brett's trying to do to the issue. Pedant, exactly I right to say yeah yeah ehs which i didn't i made no secret of i talked about it right here on the live stream so i clipped that he took that <laughs> and he portrayed it as i didn't portray it i clipped it my um consulting for the department of homeland security and then I said that he needed to apologize, he needed to retract, and he needed to be fired. 
And I was challenged in a way that I actually probably should have seen coming, but I did not expect, which is, oh, I get it. You are in favor of cancel culture when it's about you. Now, this strikes me as insane. Why does Matt Lech need to be fired? He does not need to be canceled. I never wanted him canceled. He needs to be fired for cause. That's what used to happen in the adult world. When somebody, if your pilot shows up drunk, they need to be fired for cause. If your surgeon refuses to scrub up before surgery, they need to be fired. What if they refuse to get vaccinated? Anyway. Or cause. That's not cancellation. This person does not belong in journalism. And if he just made an error, if this is once in a lifetime, then he needs to own up to that error exactly. And nothing he has delivered so far is anything other than grudging. So I think he needs to be fired for cause. And I think Sam Cedar needs to understand that his ability to continue in whatever he's doing, if it's journalism. Now, this is very interesting. Because uh, I will point out a couple things. Uh, I, I am not like certain journalists who um, Vox, others more recently, who take the Brett Weinstein origin story completely at face value. Now, I absolutely think that uh, you know physical intimidation uh, is wrong, um, mm-hmm. for instance. But if you look at Brett Weinstein's story at Evergreen a little bit closer, uh, before the day of absence, he was having problems with, say, Um, diversity requirements for hiring and things like that. So this was an anti-affirmative action guy, in my opinion, more than it was a Bernie Sand generic Bernie Sanders supporter. If we're going to just label Bernie Sanders supporter people who we don't look into really their background, like, I don't know. I think it's weird that he doesn't like Stephen Jay Gould as a science, as a science progressive. Um, But I don't know enough about science to, to say about that. But um uh, do I have a little bit more of this clip? Let's just continue with this. Um, and I'll, I'll run a little bit more. Um, oops. Requires that he own up to the fact that what Matt, Matt Ledge did is uh, justification for firing and that that is actually the required action unless something utterly extraordinary happens. So Now, this talk of requirement... Um, I, I refer to the origin story because another thing that I think is important from my perspective, maybe I'm wrong about Brett, is that his brother Eric Weinstein works for Peter Thiel, and indeed Peter Thiel was uh, the very first uh, guest on his podcast, and Peter Thiel has uh, funded lawsuits that bankrupt publications. I take that, what Brett said there, as not only is he saying just fire me cancellation, and which he uh, somehow thinks isn't cancellation, He's threatening legal action against the majority report uh, because mm-hmm. of that tweet there. And that is the terrain we're playing on with these, these free speech warriors, these people that we would hold up as defenders of an anti-censorship. They are bankrolled by anti-speech vampires like Peter Thiel. And they are looking for a reason. Dave Rubin talks about this all the time. They would love it. They, they, the problem is they know it would look bad. And that's mm-hmm. the only thing they're worried about. If they could do it some way where it's like, um, I feel like the UK has stuff like this, like underground lawsuits where you can't bring up everything. I think there's probably stuff like that in the US. If they could do that, they would. And they'd take out left of media like that. Um, mm-hmm. like, like, and I, I guarantee Peter Thiel has lawyers thinking about how, which left wing progressive shows to go after. So I think, um, I just want to say that like we have a model of responsibility in a time of danger and what's, uh, what's responsible to say. And I think we also have an attack on free speech by uh, Brett Weinstein there. So uh, that's my story of uh, when the canceled uh, became canceller uh, or the fire, which I mean, I think I'd rather get canceled, I must say. Like, oh, can- for sure, cancel right? me. Uh-huh. What? I- I'm not really sure philosophically what the difference is there. But anyway, Brett, kiss my ass uh, is uh, how I want to end that clip. You're the bum steer of the week, yeah, too, bumps, Bella. Bum steer of yeah. I mean, the pandemic, buddy. <laughs> I mean, not, yeah, I mean, not only I'm, spreading shit about the vaccine, like, ooh, it's, you know, I'm not. For and somebody it's, like this, I'm sorry, for yeah. somebody like this to even utter, like, let's say for a second, like, you could abstract Brett's thing, right, from, like, the context of who he is and what he says, right? Oh, you know, or, like, let's have a reason adult conversation about, like, journalistic ethics, right? All right. 
But dude, you're out here lying to people and, and, and confusing them and running like muddled information about vaccines and medicines that they can take. And when you get challenged on it, you say, well, who is to know what is true or false, right? Okay, well, you have entered into this realm and this arena yourself, right? That is a road that you chose to yes. travel, right? And then you somehow are getting worked up about the ethics of journalism. Give yeah. me a fucking break. That, that's what always pisses me off about these IW guys is they like to portray themselves as these brave truth tellers that will tell the truth that nobody wants to say, like Sam Harris, like and Charles Murray, right? Perfect example. But then act so fucking sensitive to the critique that they should know is coming. Like if you're going to overturn a fucking paradigm in the way we think about things, like expect yeah. a little bit of fucking heat. I mean, Christ's sake.